Hi, I'm Lucia and today I'll be presenting a publication that is actually coming out from my master thesis. As an introduction for all of you, design is a relatively new discipline in Uruguay. In fact, the dominant discourse has its beginnings in the foundation of the first design school of the country in 1987, the Center of Industrial Design. I'll call it CDI after its Spanish name. The CDI, from which I'm a former student, is presented as a different, I would say foreign, form of educational institution for the country. This is related to the context of the cooperation program responsible for its foundation, Cooperación Italiana, and the interest of this in regard with the existence of such one institution in Uruguay, as the CDI was part of a cultural commercial treat between Uruguay and Italy. This research aims to analyze the relationship between current dominant design discourse in Uruguay and the idea of design for development from a decolonial worldview. My research approach was qualitative and the research material were documents. The final selection consisted of two pieces, both publications from the Cooperazione Italiana in regard to the CDE Foundation. The first one, presented in a narrative style with a co-authorship of four male authors, all of them related to activities of design education or culture in Italy, is composed of seven short essays, and the main interest is that of presenting the idea of design for development as a solution for economic and social problematics. The second, the first written material available to the project of the Center of Industrial Design in Uruguay. This document has a more business model style. It presents market studies, market possibilities, and even an implementation cost plan for the first years. Besides, it states the importance of having experts, all of those Italian ones, on all decision-making roles, as well as the importance of professors, Uruguayan professors, being trained in Italy. This document is signed by the Italian expert Franca Rossi, who would then become the first head of director of the CDI. Bringing a case study that is attached to personal experience required the use of a methodology that could benefit from it. Therefore, critical discourse analysis was presented to me as a researcher and former CDE student as a way of positioning myself inside a problem addressed, taking a determined stance defined as a worldview. As this is a design research, I found important to combine such structure process with a practical way of presenting my research and fundings. So I got inspired by the ideas of Dori Tunster on hybrid design forms, for which I use color coding as to balance the use of the text as only research material. In terms of process, I follow Ruth Bodak's triad, composed by the explanation, interpretation and critic steps. The first one, explanation. I perform an in-depth text analysis of the inspirational documents and depicted the discourse in which it is positioned. Second one, the interpretation. A new document is incorporated in this step, the plan for the CDE. I attempted to find the possible discursive roots for the CDE Foundation by analyzing the potential influence of the Italian experts' discourse. Here, the positionality of me as a research towards the topic was very important, as I was able, due to my experience as a former student, to validate that this document was actually put into practice. The third and last step, critique. Once the relations between both documents were fine, I took my decolonial worldview and shifted the document's analysis as to understand the modern colonial aspects presented on the CDE foundational discourse. This addresses hidden political social structures through the institutional aims of Uruguayans' industrial design education. The first step, explanation, as I said before, was marked by one major research task, the terminology analysis for which I selected a compendium of words and look up for their appearance along the document. For defining the words, I follow Mignolo and Wanamaker's Colonial Matrix of Power as to be constituted for people, knowledge and the institutions that create knowledge. In line with my research question, I position institutions at the center and as following my worldview, I incorporated the coloniality to it. Once I performed this text analysis, I was able to find out that the Italian expert perspective is strongly linked to the notion of modernity as associated with the notion of development. The notion of development has a major presence here being associated with the idea of methodologies as a means of increasing production. Moreover, the idea of modernism, development, is transmitted as a standard every society wants to reach. Design appears to be connected to the idea of new innovation, new creation, and ideas that appeared as solution to economic problems directly related to private industry. Industrial design appears to be strongly related to skill 
and prefix processes. In line, the design school is framed by a constellation of dualisms. Develop, underdeveloped, professor, student, modern, old, design, craft. Consequently, the industrial design school is shown as a necessary agent for the production matrix of development with a schematic and replicable base idea of the industrial design discipline. In terms of this course, it can be seen that it is the promise of development that fosters industrialization. The development under development comparison shows the hierarchies of culture and the role which each one should take. Moreover, development stands for things such as path, taking off or turn to, and giving the idea of a process moving towards future evolution, progress and economic independence. The aim of the second step, inspiration, was to understand the implication of such discourse on the foundation of the CDE. First, I performed a terminology analysis as well in order to compare the use of language and I was able to find discursive repetition patterns that were very clear. Second, I followed to relate these patterns towards institutional decision in regard to discursive knowledge creation. In this occasion, I'm going to just show you the second part as it reflects the discursive entanglement between both documents. So first, we can see that Uruguay is deprived of industrial agency and categorized as not able to deal with such process on its own. This relates to appreciations towards underdeveloped countries presented in the first document. Here, we can see the perception of design as a service. This adheres to the universal way of industrial design presented by the Italian experts. And it strongly linkage the methods and skill necessary to better massive production. In line, the idea of aiding industrial production relates to the universal necessity of development as a unique path towards a better life. Now, this example shows how training is in line with the idea of instruction presented on the first document. Whilst the contribution to specific problem reproduces the idea like design knowledge related to specific practices on that of the designer as a cultural operator present on the first document. Well, good. With this in mind, I continue to enter the third and last step of the 3.8, the critique, in which I basically introduce my decolonial worldview and use it as to depict modern colonial structures presented in the CDE foundational discourse. From all my fundings, I'm going to present two of them today. First, the dualism developed underdeveloped as to reproduce the colonial distinction of cultures peoples. The dualism between old craft and design modern activity. This reproduces the notion of indoctrination presented by Quijano by stating the necessity of introducing modes of production that would attempt towards modes of cultures. Moreover, the figure of Italian experts reproduces the colonial division of dominant dominated, as they are presented as the wise and responsible for all decision making. In line, designers develop countries' culture function as an example of how the notion of authenticidad, developed by the Uruguayan philosopher Mario Sambarino, plays a role in the differentiation of cultures by stating design as originally coming from the so-called developed countries, or other countries are deprived of authority over design, and thus of the possibility of developing its own design discourse. My second major funding was the methodological approach that is so present on the figure of the designer as a problem solver. The constant repetition on the relationship between methods, skills, ways and problem solutions. This can be seen in the idea of operational instruction, which states a scenario on which knowledge is reduced to a mere technical information. This way, students are detached from knowledge by means of not including any social, political and cultural contextualization. This is strongly imposed by the cooperation programs as they seek to sectorize the activities of planning, defining the design discipline as a global North activity only. Therefore, turning educational structures in a tool for the concentration of privilege. Moreover, the CDE as a service improving international competitiveness creates a so-called top-down policy model defined by Professor Alice Clark as typical for the discourse of design for development. As a general conclusion, I would like to say that to understand the design and knowledge are components of a cultural formation, 
and as such cannot be treated as independent, allow me to capture the difficulty of speaking about authenticidad for the CDE discourse without looking at the Uruguayan cultural formation itself. The historical dependency of Uruguay on Europe as its only cultural origin should be tackled inside the design school as the determining factor on the country's design practice. I would argue that Uruguay should transit a self-inclusive process by means of Uruguayans integrating themselves in the creation of an Uruguayan design discourse by accepting the plurality of cultures that have historically converged in the Uruguayan cultural formation. Thank you very much. <laughs>